Mr. Secretary General, uh, I would like to formally welcome you back to Iceland. This is, of course, not the first time uh, we see Hannes Stoltenberg here in Iceland. He has been here many times before in his previous capacity, but uh, we are very happy to welcome him here now as the Secretary General of uh, NATO. We have had very good discussions on Iceland's cooperation with NATO and developments uh, in, within NATO and the, uh, the challenges NATO is currently facing. For example, the situation in Eastern Europe, the uh, threat of uh, ISIL, uh, national security in Afghanistan, and uh, the importance of cybersecurity. Uh, all in all, a, a very good and informative discussion, and we look forward to uh, working with uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, who has been, um, I think it's safe to say, very successful up until now as Secretary General of NATO. Please. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Sigmundur. It's uh, great to be back uh, in Iceland, and as you said, I've been here many, many times. But this is my first uh, visit to uh, Reykjavik, to Iceland, as uh, Secretary General of uh, NATO. And uh, uh, Iceland is a um, highly valued uh, member of the Alliance, and uh, uh, we have had uh, excellent discussions today related to many different challenges which we face as an alliance in a changing security environment. And I started my visit um, here in Iceland by visiting the uh, Keflavik um, uh, station where uh, we uh, visited the um, uh, peacetime peacetime mission for uh, air surveillance, which is uh, key and which is a good example of how uh, NATO is committed to the security of uh, uh, Iceland. And uh, uh, it also shows how NATO contributes to security and stability in this part of uh, the Atlantic. But I would also like to underline that uh, Iceland in many ways contributes to uh, the alliance. You contribute to our mission in Afghanistan to train, uh, advise and assist the Afghan uh, National Security Forces. You contribute to our efforts uh, uh, in Ukraine uh, in, uh, in supporting one of the trust funds we have in Ukraine to try to help the Ukrainian uh, government in uh, modernizing their defense uh, capacities. And uh, Iceland has uh, shown leadership when it comes to uh, the uh, vital link between women, peace and uh, uh, security. And uh, I therefore very much uh, appreciate this opportunity to discuss uh, uh, all the different aspects of the cooperation between Iceland and uh, NATO, because uh, uh, you are really contributing in many different ways to uh, our uh, uh, alliance. And this is uh, especially important because we now are experiencing a changing security environment. We see a more assertive Russia uh, to uh, the east, violating international law, annexing uh, part of another country. Uh, this is the first time this has happened since the Second World War. The, the illegal and illegitimate annexation of uh, uh, Crimea. But we also see turmoil and, uh, and violence uh, in the south uh, with ISIL uh, in uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, North Africa. And this uh, requires that uh, NATO responds uh, or, or is responding, and that's exactly what we are doing uh, in uh, uh, in following up the decisions we made at our summit in Wales last uh, fall. Uh, we are doing that by increasing the readiness and uh, the preparedness of our forces. We have doubled the size of uh, the NATO response force from 13,000 to 30,000. And, uh, uh, and uh, the centerpiece of this uh, uh, enhanced NATO response force is uh, uh, spearhead force. Uh, where the lead elements are able to move within as little as uh, 48 uh, uh, hours. And uh, part of this is also going to be uh, air, sea and special forces. Uh, and I think that uh, to increase the readiness and the preparedness of our forces 
is important uh, to uh, demonstrate that uh, NATO also in the future in the, in the future is able to defend and protect all allies against any threat and that's of course also the case uh, for uh, Iceland. So uh, for me it has been really a great pleasure to meet with you again and to be able to discuss how we can continue to develop the excellent uh, cooperation within uh, the Alliance. Uh, Iceland is one of the founding members of uh, NATO. Uh, you are at the heart of the North Atlantic cooperation just uh, uh, because of the fact that you are located where you are uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Sea and therefore also in a unique position to make sure that we are keeping the bond between Europe and North America rock solid and therefore uh, I appreciate this opportunity to meet with you and to uh, further develop our excellent cooperation. So thank you. Thank you. So, any questions? A uh, question to both of you. My, my, my name is Peter from Channel 2 Television. Uh, the NATO presence in Iceland has been rather small since the American Navy base was closed here. Uh, the Icelandic government uh, has uh, stated that they, she, she would wish to have a stronger presence here, maybe in cooperation with NATO with a certain rescue center in Iceland. Did you have an opportunity to, to discuss that possibility if Iceland under the flag of NATO could have such a search and rescue center here in Iceland? So we, we discussed the importance of uh, NATO presence in uh, uh, in also this part of uh, the Atlantic and uh, uh, I started the day as I said by visiting the uh, peacetime uh, surveillance mission which uh, NATO now actually is conducting uh, out of uh, Keflavik and uh, I think that demonstrates the willingness of NATO and NATO allies to uh, be present, uh, to uh, do air policing and to do surveillance uh, as part of the uh, NATO uh, commitment to uh, Iceland. Uh, we also uh, discussed uh, search and rescue and that, uh, that was also one of the issues that was raised when I visited to the Keflavik base. But it's too early to say uh, uh, how far we can uh, develop that cooperation further. But search and rescue is, of course, important. And uh, I welcome the important contribution made by the Icelandic Coast Guard, uh, which is key when it comes to search and rescue, also for the uh, peacetime uh, surveillance uh, mission. Uh, my name is uh, Ragnhildur Sigurdóttir from Reuters. I was wondering, uh, there seem to have been some upsurge in Ukraine in the past few days. Um, what do you think should be done about it? That is the Minsk agreement still being uh, honored? We are very concerned about the increased uh, violence in eastern Ukraine. And we have seen more violations of the ceasefire. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, more uh, movement of uh, heavy equipment and uh, and therefore uh, we are of course very concerned because this is undermining the uh, ceasefire and the whole Minsk agreement and the Minsk agreement is uh, uh, the best uh, foundation for a peaceful negotiated solution to the crisis in eastern uh, Ukraine and therefore it is so important that uh, we support all efforts to make sure that uh, the ceasefire and the Minsk agreement is fully implemented and fully respected. And that's about uh, respecting the ceasefire. It's about uh, the withdrawal of all heavy weapons from uh, the front line. And I call on both parties to do so. And I also call on Russia to stop uh, supporting the separatists and to uh, make sure that they use all their influence over the separatists uh, uh, so they are uh, respecting the ceasefire and, uh, and redrawing heavy weapons from the uh, contact line or, or the front line. Uh, because uh, uh, we should uh, do whatever we can to support uh, the efforts to find a peaceful solution to the conflict in, in, uh, in Eastern Ukraine. 
Hi, my name is Vera Rinoto from the Icelandic uh, National Broadcasting Service. Uh, the five Nordic countries have recently announced uh, increased uh, defense cooperation because of Russian threat. What is NATO's position on that? I welcome very much um, increased uh, cooperation between uh, the Nordic countries. Uh, I think that's a win-win situation. Uh, and it also increases the cooperation between NATO and uh, non-NATO countries, also Finland and Sweden. And uh, I think that's uh, good because it's a way of pooling uh, resources, uh, getting more out of the investments we all make in defense. And uh, it uh, increases our ability to have a strong military presence uh, in the Nordic uh, countries. So more exercising together, uh, closer cooperation, is uh, important for Iceland. It's important for uh, all the other Nordic countries, and uh, and uh, it uh, it uh, makes uh, countries like uh, so Sweden and Finland, which are not uh, NATO members, but they are close partners of of, of NATO, uh, and it makes that partnership even. Uh, more important and uh, it uh, contributes to more content and substance to our cooperation when we are expanding the Nordic uh, defense cooperation. And, uh, and uh, I'm also glad uh, to, to tell you that I'm going to visit my father uh, this weekend and he presented this uh, Stoltenberg report uh, some years ago and I know that he's very glad every time there is so much as an implementation and follow-up of that report, and this is one of the core messages in the in in his report some some years ago. Give your father the best regards. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Stefan Gunnar from Wattenblad. Uh, it's kind of linked to Vera's question because in the statement or the article that the ministers wrote, uh, there was a strong statement of support for the Baltic states. Uh, did you discuss how the Nordic countries, um, Iceland specifically, could? Uh, help sort of strengthen the Baltic states vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russian aggression or the security <coughs> The key issue is to provide collective defense, is to make clear also in the future that any attack on any NATO ally is an attack not only on one ally, but on 28 allies. And, uh, and, that's, and that's the main purpose of NATO, mm -hmm. is to be able to provide deterrence so no one considers any attack on any NATO ally. That's the case for all the Baltic countries, it's the case for Iceland, it's the case for Norway, it's the case for 28 allies. And, uh, and therefore, uh, that's also the reason why NATO, as a response to what we saw in Ukraine last year, decided to increase our military presence in the eastern part of the alliance with uh, air policing uh, over the Baltic uh, Sea, with uh, more ships at sea uh, and more troops on the ground on a rotational basis. Uh, all NATO allies contribute in different ways to these assurance measures, and all NATO allies also contribute to the increased readiness and preparedness of our forces, uh, as I said, by the establishment of an enhanced NATO response force, doubling the size, and uh, a centerpiece of this enhanced NATO respo response force is the high readiness force, or the spirit force, uh, which has some lead elements that uh, are able to move within as little as uh, 48 hours. In addition to that, we are establishing command and control, or command uh, units, in the three Baltic countries, uh, uh, along with uh, uh, similar command units in, in, in Poland, Romania, and, uh, and Bulgaria. Uh, so all of these are efforts by NATO, supported by uh, also by Iceland, uh, to make sure that uh, all countries, also in the future, are 100% defended and protected by NATO. Oh, anything else? Final question. Okay, question. What do you think should be done about uh, Russian military aircrafts threatening the security of civilian aircrafts, particularly in the <coughs> Baltic area, by not communicating with civil aircraft? What we have seen is increased Russian military uh, air activity in general. Uh, we have seen substantial increase over a period of time. And uh, we have not only seen increased numbers of flights, but the flights are also more complex, more advanced. And uh, I think the important thing is that uh, 
military flights uh, also pay due regard to the safety of civilian air traffic. And uh, uh, a European Aviation Safety uh, Agency just uh, published a, a report underlining the importance of also uh, military aircrafts uh, conducting their flights in a way which uh, uh, not undermine the safety of uh, civilian air traffic. And this is, of course, important, uh, especially because uh, we see increased military air activity. Um, it al also underlines the importance of that NATO is vigilant and that we have the capacity in to intercept and to identify. And, uh, and one of the things they do out of Keflavik is to identify and to, uh, when, when necessary, also intercept uh, flights, planes which are unidentified. Uh, so uh, the air policing, uh, the um, uh, peacetime preparedness mission, uh, all of this is important because it uh, also uh, adds to the safety of civilian air traffic because the sooner we can identify uh, unidentified uh, planes, the better for civilian air traffic. Okay, so good. Thank you very much. Thank you.